five, four, three. You didn't say two or one. Oh, you, you don't say two or one. Why not? You just don't. Okay. Now, it goes... Five, four, three... Wax. This world is brought to you by Noah's Arcade. Party on... Whack. Wax. Wax. Friday, it's 11.30, it's time to party with your excellent host, Bushwhack. And with him, as always, is Chuck. Party on, Whack. And party on, Chuck. Wax. Okay, uh, welcome to Wax. World. Party on, Chuck. I guess. Hey. Okay, hey. and we're here, I guess. Hey, yeah. Let, let's review last week a little bit. Uh, yeah. Well, um, so uh, we, we did a lineup last week for the first time. Yeah, how are we doing that lineup? Uh, well, well, there are some good parts and some bad I parts. I know that Jawan Johnson wasn't. That one wasn't good, but he did have a couple targets that he didn't catch. Uh, and uh, and Lazard wasn't wasn't good. I think they both got like one point oh, something. So our, our lineup scored 128, which oh isn't God, enough. It's not, not it's not our good. goal at 150. But if you would have just switched out uh Davis for one of those guys, you would have you would have scored been in the 170s. So um, you know, is that close? Right. Davis was kind of one of those guys you had to have. If somebody scores 50 and uh, with a with a small slate like this, you got to have them. I had plenty of them. Yeah, and I didn't win anything. <laughs> well, so you had to have him plus somebody else. Then, no, huh? no, no. I had plenty. I yeah. had well, I played. I should have played different, different. Uh, I, I was really confident, and there was some uh, multipliers that I liked, uh, like twenty five dollars buy in with the top ten get two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, ten times. I was like, dude, I can get that, and uh, I was winning two of those. I I put in like one seventy five or something like that, and I was up six eighty or so. I was winning. Hey, that's a good day. And then overtime, and I watched all my money just dwindle that, away, and my team didn't even touch the field. Man, it, it hurts to be up before the game's over. The overtime screws me every time. Yeah, overtime uh, kills me. I look. I basically. I probably lost five thousand dollars this year on coin flip. I, I, it's ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, and it, that kills you. Mm -hmm. that, that kills your your spirit. It hurts when your team don't even touch the – your dudes don't even touch the field, man. Yep. Just watch it dwindle away. So I, what I figured out is our problem with our lineup last week is that we didn't have really anyone from the highest projected game. That was so so that was probably a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. where we went wrong. Uh, maybe uh, pulling in a Davis or, or uh, someone else that scored some points on that would have – Yeah, you got to have that. Now, I thought it was going to be a little bit more Knox. I thought he was going to get a touchdown or two, though. And uh, so I only had I put in eleven lineups. I only had two Davis. Uh, one of those did score. I, I was in an eight thousand dollar contest. I was in the top two hundred, but the other ten did not score. So that was uh, that was a loser. I preached against this several times to myself. I don't know if I said it on here, but if there's a hey maybe this will happen, I don't play the person. There was and there was too many maybes. I uh, may I I was big on Randall Cobb. I was like, man, maybe he'll he's coming back. Maybe he'll. no maybes, no maybes, I, right. no maybes. Right. I'm not a maybe person anymore. You know, the, with the games this week, I, my problem with it is they're. I think they're all maybes. Oh, I don't know. I think I got a pretty good. You got you got. I, think a, I got a good handle on it. But then again, I thought that last week. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying with uh with these uh Chiefs receivers and with yeah. these um uh Cincinnati receivers, it could almost be any one of them. Right, and, and maybe not. You know, Hardman's probably not going to get thirty points, uh, but he could get uh, the other touchdown. You know, it could be it could be Kelsey with two and Hardman with one instead of Hill or something. That's kind of the scary part with just two games. A lot of times you're going to have to have damn. Well, now if they're both high scoring, you'll be fine. But if they say this, they're both twenty one to eighteen, you know, something they're both like that. You're going to have to have everybody to score. Yes, to win it all. Right, you have to have every single touchdown score. Yep. And I, I don't think I'm going to play a classic this week. I think I'm just going to play them individually in the in the captain mode. With very few games, 
there aren't as many options, obviously. So it's a better, you have a better chance of getting the higher, higher score, but also there's going to be a whole lot of other people with that same lineup, I believe. So a uh, good chance that you split it, unless you come up with that one guy that hardly anybody has that's, uh, you know, under the radar. I'll tell you, I have a, I have a strategy this week. Okay. Let's well, hear I am going with nothing but obvious. I'm not going off the beaten path at all. I'm not going Hardman. I'm not going Pringle. I'm not going anybody. I got Hig Higby is probably my least number. He to, he's tore the uh, 49ers up this year. Cup, Higby, uh, Debo, Chase, Boyd. The, I mean, I'm going all so you, top if, of the line. If you can get all those in the lineup, why not? That's one. Yeah, and they're they're priced pretty, pretty pretty well. I mean, you know, generously. Yeah, they're priced generously. That's what I was trying to say. So. I, you know, I was looking through some data, and uh, you know, we talked before about you wanting to get three times of their cost mm -hmm. and value. So I just looked at a few players, like how many times had they done that this year, and what would you think would be, let's say, on the Chiefs, a high number that got three times value? Oh, oh, okay. I, I'll tell you right now. I bet Tyreek Hill didn't hit his number very much. Hill six times out of twenty weeks. We're talking six, six out, out of 20. twenty. Yeah, but yeah. so did Pringle, and so did Hardman. Now they were lower numbers because they don't cost as much, but still for the they got just as much value at their cost as as uh, Hill did. Hill, but Hill would go off with a fifty point week. These guys are, wouldn't have weeks like that. That's what makes um, a Cooper Cup eight what eight eight eighty eight hundred. Yeah, he's got to get twenty six points. Yeah, right? that's a lot. That's a lot of that's points. A, that's a lot of points, man. <laughs> right. Is he going to be able to do that? I don't. I mean, good lord, he, how many times has he hit his? Did you see? Uh, yeah, I did. Thirteen out of the twenty. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, earlier in the year, he was lower priced. I mean, he he became the highest priced wide receiver throughout the season. Yeah, you know, but at first he was lower. I say that I bet Jamar Chase at six six seven. That's uh, that's pretty generous. I yeah. bet he hit his quite a bit. I would imagine eight times. Eight. Yep. That's it. But that, but I think that's, that's pretty, pretty high. Good, yeah, that's yeah, almost half rookie, time. my guy. And was higher than a lot of these other guys. You know, Higgins did um, seven know, times. Last time he five. played the Chiefs, he just absolutely two sixty six and three touchdowns. What, that's a, that's crazy. Good you think that's Lord. what's going to happen again? Something like that? No, but I mean, I think they're going to be throwing to him. So um, that game, obviously, it's the higher projected scoring yeah. game. Have you heard about Tyron Matthew? Is he he's questionable? Uh, yeah, I've heard he's questionable. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. That. But um, if they can do that with him in there, what are they going to do to him without him in there? Yeah, yeah. I can see. I can see Cincinnati winning this game. Oh, easy, absolutely, dude. The Chiefs always put up a dud in the playoffs. It's usually, I mean, the Andy Reid teams, I should say, not the Chiefs, but it's usually in the Super Bowl. The, the first Super Bowl they won, they got lucky. <laughs> they shouldn't have won that. They played like trash, mm -hmm. and uh, the, and then yeah, last year played like trash. Uh, his his Eagles teams they would always get to the championship game or get to the Super Bowl and just lay an egg, man. Nothing. Yeah, he'd lose the big one. Yeah, and, and they'd play terrible too. They, and it's weird how you predict stuff like that. But uh, Andy Reid's teams, okay, the last two years before this one, Andy Reid's teams always had a lull in the middle of the season. They would play well, 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 and then towards the middle of the season they would hit like a five game lull where you're like, is this the same team? Are they they fell apart? Is this it? Is that is this team done? And then they come right back. They yeah. storm back somehow. Yeah. Yeah, They've always like, done it, except for the last two years. They said Mahomes, before this year, had never lost in September. So they were always starting off 5-0. and oh, You know, yeah. I think one year they were 10-0. Oh. That's, that's Reed teams. Reed teams used to always do that with the Eagles, too. Yep. And then and then they have that, like you said, yeah. they'll, they'll go on a little losing streak or, or lose, you know, three out of the next four or something like yep. that. And they didn't do that with Mahomes until this year. The, the, the first couple of years he was starting, they did not do that. But, yeah, they did it this year, so... Back to the old Andy Reid team. I got a couple of interesting <coughs> uh, facts here for you. A little bit of history. I, I like to use history a little bit. It's not my complete sure. uh, decision maker, but it does go into that into that thought process. So, since 2019, every one of these quarterbacks has won every game against the team they're playing, or has lost every game against the team they're playing. Oh shoot! I know Garoppolo is one of them. Yes, you know yeah. Gar Garoppolo has 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 never lost against L.A. Yeah. He uh, is yeah, like 7-0. and 0. Yeah, LA ter I mean, San Francisco tears their ass up. Yes. That's yeah, crazy. Yes, and, and so I'm, I'm really worried about the Rams this week. I mean, Stafford's never been in this position. Yeah, since I actually, since 2019, Garoppolo is 5-0 and 0 against LA. And uh, two of those games, they won by a field goal. One of them, they won by a touchdown, actually eight. And then two of those other games, they won by two scores or more. Oh, shit. Two scores, huh? Yep, one was 13 and one was like 21. 
That and, and the Rams can't run right now. Look, man, Acres is an amazing story. Amazing. Yes, but that he's he even able run, to play. Yes, right now. he can run with the shit though. Right. Yep. <laughs> and um, and and 49ers, they they quell the run too. Yeah. So Garoppolo never lost against the Rams. Uh, is this the time? The what? Look, man. We we both we told Chad. We told Chad. When he said, I'd, I'd much rather be playing the 49ers and the Cowboys, we're like, no, you wouldn't. No. Nope. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> right. they, they, they throw looks at you. They throw – Kyle Shanahan is a scheme master. You, you don't know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, you know, last year they were so bad because of the injuries. Yes. They had half their defense, like, on injured reserve. Yeah. Uh, and ha- and, and their running their backs. They're, they're a big running team, and just running backs just a dime a dozen in, out, yep. in, out. Even Debo last year was out, hurt all they year. Hurt most of the year, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, speaking of Debo, this is kind of one of those games where – it was too, actually. Go where, ahead. Where fantasy and reality split. I mean, Debo was obviously the MVP of that game. Yeah, but he didn't get a touchdown. He only got eleven points. You yeah. know, there are better guys to play than him, even though he was the number one guy in that game. He he, does, he touches the ball running. He you know he loses the points for for receptions right now. He's uh he scored twenty nine and thirty against the Rams this year though. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Hey, this is Chuck with the Chris Sabo Power Hour. We'll be re-releasing episodes every Monday at 7 p.m. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to listen to all the crazy antics of the boys from back in the day. Uh, So since I I only went back to 2019, Cincinnati just played uh, Kansas City this week. Year, mm-hmm. I think a few weeks ago, six, yes. week sixteen mm-hmm. or seventeen, something, won by a field goal. Won by a field goal, but boy, if you look at their stats, it was a lot, like their their individual stats were unbelievable. Right, and then um, Stafford as a Ram has not beat the Niners. Stafford yep. in, in the two games this year has thrown four touchdowns, but also four interceptions. Towards the end of the season, he got on a roll where he was he was not playing well. A lot of picks. That San Francisco team, they're hell a lot better than you think they are. Actually, if you look at Stafford and uh, Jimmy G's stats against you know the other team, they're both averaging about 240 yards a game. Stafford has two touchdowns a game, and Jimmy G is 1.6, and and then Stafford's thrown two touchdown, two interceptions, and Jimmy G is only thrown, uh, you know, or he averages one a game. Yeah. So they they might if the numbers hold up, they could have very similar numbers. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with paying down for him. My favorite is to put in Burrow or I think Holmes, Burrow's the one this week. I do too. So we're, we're locking in Burrow. We both agree Burrow, on that. Dude, Burrow, he don't give a shit. And I love, he don't care. He's I love a bad that he's man. cocky too. Yes. He knows he's he good. He don't care. Yep. He's like, uh, he get, that dude's going to roll in his, he might roll in the Super Bowl. It's like, yawn, who cares? Right. I got it. No big deal. I think when they uh, finally clinched a, a playoff berth, you know, there was uh, some interview, maybe post game interview with him, and he's like, just get used to it. We're going to be here. Yeah. And, and I love that. that. You, did you say a kicker? <laughs> that, no, Dominic go ahead. Pearson? Oh, dude, I love that guy. This dude's a rookie kicker, okay? He won four games, I think, before this. And I like 50 yarders. This kid's just a machine. And uh, he's got a 52-yarder to win this game. A big game in the playoffs. Win this game. And he goes up and tells the team, just cracking his knuckles. He's like, he's like, oh, man, I can't believe this, dude. We're going to the championship game. They're like, <laughs> before he kicked it. Before he kicked it. And they're like, oh, okay. You can't miss after that. <laughs> no. He goes in, splits him right in half. No big deal. Walks off. Dude, this kid's a bad boy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, he's been scoring like 13, 14 points a game or something. Yeah, he's a bad man. I like him. With him and Burrow out there? I like, buddy, I liked this Bengals team for a long time. Wait, you mean long for, time as in Long like, time as in years. Like, Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, kind of. No, no, I like him years to come. Oh, okay. Uh, in see, the future, not, not, not back. <laughs> I, I no, no, no. T.J. Hushman's out. No, no, no. No. Dalton was good there for a long time. Uh, Palmer was good for a while. A.J. Green. They couldn't win a playoff game. They couldn't. Yeah. They, they had the Steelers beat, but uh, Vontez Perfect took uh, Antonio Brown. <laughs> he ruined his life by scrambling his brain forever, and they had to give the game back. So we blame him for uh, <laughs> A.B.'s uh, breakdown that's, this that's year. That's what a lot of people do. They say he was all right until he got his Bell head wrong. bashed in there. It was bad too, man. That that was a bad one. So we both agree that uh, Burrow is the quarterback. Like, I, yes, where, yeah. where I would you, lock him in. Where are you on running backs? Running backs, I love Mitchell. Number one, the other ones I, I give a. Look. I mean, Burrow or uh, Mixon has more talent, but not everybody's going to go off, and I think the receivers are going to go off there. But of course, he could just fall in the end zone because they're going to be around it. So I, I'm I'm wondering about oh, CEH. McKinnon. That's what I like. What am I talking about? McKinnon. Yes, I yeah. like McKinnon. He's been catching a lot of passes lately. 
He outcarried him too last game, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, uh, but um, uh, Ch had probably more efficient runs. He did. Um, but it, the receiving. If you think that the Bengals are going to be winning, I think the McKenna's going to be the one in there. Which I think that Cincinnati is going to be winning this game. Yeah, I do too. Uh, so you're you're probably right about that. Now, uh, in that uh, game they played earlier this year, um, Williams had two rushing touchdowns. Mm. So I'm, I'm wondering if they just uh, you know if they get close if they if they found that they can get a little push on the inside and get some run one in instead of yeah that'd be C H one yeah I yeah. think so I think uh, I think Gore's going to be the you know he would be the backup to a runner and then uh, McKinnon's probably getting more of the pass catching duties and I'm not yeah. sure what's going to happen with uh, with uh, Williams I, I, maybe he's he still hurt is he... I think he might be back but uh, not 100 yeah. percent speaking of back. We have, uh, is it a running back back this week? Sanu. Is that who you're talking about? Sanu's one of them, but also, oh, Henderson's back for the Rams. Oh, so McVay stays with one dude, though. So, Akers? Yeah. Akers, Sony? Yeah, I uh, think it's Akers. Yeah. McVay always stays with one guy. So, you don't think Henderson's going to be a factor at all? No. Might be Michelle. I don't know, but if if he starts out with Akers, it's going to be Akers. It, all yeah, the time. it wasn't That's Michelle he, last since Akers no. came back, really. So. I don't know why, but yeah. He was hate Michelle. Dude, dude does fine. He's, he's really efficient. Yeah. And Acres has not been efficient. Like I said, Acres a great, great story. Love the story. I can't believe he's back from Achilles. He'll be better next year. Like five, yeah, absolutely. He'll be great. But yeah, Michelle's better right now. I would throw in some Ceh, but I agree with you on Mitchell. He's going to get the volume. He's going to get twenty three touches again or something like that. Yeah. And uh, then who was your second? Uh, McKinnon for me. McKinnon. Now. It'd be McKinnon C slash CEH. I'm always I, wrong on freaking game script anyway. So right, yeah. I'm going on game script in my brain. So, so you throw either one of those guys in yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Rotate them or something. Yep. So the other running back, Mixon, he you know, he Mixon, could be something, yeah. but he didn't do anything last last game against Kansas City. He he he's weird, man. Like he don't have two great games in a row and he just had a great one. Um he uh, but um, I, he can. He's always a risk to fall in the end zone. If they're on the one, two, three yard line, he's gonna get in. And who knows? They could be there three damn times. You never know. San Francisco could run de- that run defense anyway. Okay, so uh, I think we agree that uh, it's uh, Mitchell and then uh, one of the Kansas City running backs. Mm-hmm. What about uh, how about we skip wide receiver and go to tight end? What do you have there? Of course, I like Kelsey. Of course, but I also like Higby. Higby has uh, three touchdowns in the two games this year against against San Francisco. Towards the end of the season and in the playoffs, they've been lighting him up pretty good. Now, Kittle, pretty has, good. Kittle, in the last five games since 2019 versus the Rams, he's had three touchdowns, three games with a touchdown, and yeah. two games with 100 yards. So he could be an option, too. He had five catches in the last game, but only 10 yards. 10 yards, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy. How in the hell does that even happen? I don't I don't know. I mean, could, <laughs> did he have negative? Did, was it like a screen that got caught behind the line know. or something? I don't I don't see how that's possible either. And I do, yeah. I do think they don't always use Kittle – the way that I think he should be used. No, God, he'd be amazing if they just if he didn't have to block so much. Yep. Holy cow! Kittle's one of those guys that only um, only got his uh, paid for his value or paid for his cost like three times all year. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. He he could put up Mark Andrews numbers easy. He could be he could be the tight end one. Absolutely. Easy. But uh, so he might be an option. I would throw in at, at tight end too. Sprinkle in kind of lightly, yeah. So you don't want. If he does have a Kittle game, like one of his Kittle Kittle games, yeah, you don't want to miss it. Right. He's one that could break the slate if if it all shakes out right. Right, he's one of those few tight ends that can have a forty point game. Uh huh. So I, I so I think we agree there uh, that Kelsey. Uh, you like Higby too, right? Yeah, I like Higby too. Okay. Yeah, Kelsey Higby uh, Kittle probably the little, little Kittle. Yeah, little yeah. Kittle. Not I don't know. The, <laughs> Just a little you, Kittle, you, you, not Zama. big Kittle. Yeah, Let's get a little, little bit of Kittle. Kittle. <laughs> uh, what about defense? I, I missed the defense last week. I'd say. I, I'm just going to – I used to say I'm not going to punt on defense. and not, I swear to God, in the playoffs, the lowest one every week scores like crazy. Like San Francisco last week, 21 they had? 21. They led, they led defenses. Actually, yeah. uh, KC and Buffalo had negative two, both of them. Yeah. I had Buffalo in about everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, uh, I had Green Bay in a lot of them. So Ugh. they only had nine, I think. Yeah. Seven or nine. The Bengals are the lowest, right? Are they not? I have uh, – yes. Yes. Yeah. Cincinnati's Dude, lowest. Hell, I'd roll with them. Why not? I would too. I would too. I don't have any problem with that. Actually, I think you can pick any one of these guys. San Francisco's the next lowest. I'd pick. Yep. I'd go with that in a second. At, if you're going to go by um, by the Vegas points, you probably want a Rams or San Francisco because they're a lower scoring uh, projected yeah, game. True, true, true. Um, but you know, any defense can have a pick six, and then you want to have them. Thank you. 
This video is brought to you by The Wellness Investors. Visit thewellnessinvestors.com and start enhancing your life one sector at a time. Okay, so so what are the wide receivers you like this week? I do like I down to I do like Ayuk for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I got him marked. Well, uh, a lot, oh. oh yes, he he did have a, a 107 yards last right. time against and, the Rams. That, and remember that first game, he was in a doghouse for like the first five six weeks of yep. the season. Yep. So he had 100 yards. That's why I liked him. I like T Higgins because I like put a thing on our fantasy labs deal. I put on the player thing on a correlation. T Higgins, if you play T Higgins. No Jamar Chase. If you play Jamar Chase, no T. Higgins, you know, yep. that. So yep. I, I like the T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd or the Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd right. with Burrow. I agree. So, yeah, so I like T. Higgins, Boyd, Cup, Hill, Chase, and Samuel. I don't have Pringle, Mart, Odell, uh, Jennings, Sanu, Jefferson. I don't have any of those guys. I, my best lineup that I'm going to put out there, or at least what I think is my best lineup, is uh, I think the same. Burrow, uh, Mitchell, CEH. I, I'm picking CEH instead of McKinnon there. Uh, Debo, Tyreek Hill, Chase. Higby is in the tight end. I, and I have Boyd in the flex. And then yeah. um, Akers. I'm sorry, uh, 49ers as the defense. I got Burrow, Eli Mitchell, and Jared McKinnon. Cooper Cup, Debo, and Jamar Chase. All three of them, pal. Whoa. Yeah. CJ Uzama. That's kind of a punt. Uh, Tyler Higby in the Bengals defense. Okay. So you played two tight ends. So you got tight end and yeah. flex there. That's that's how you were able to afford the cup. Right. That's right? how I was able to afford those three big ends. Yep. So I, I, I was, uh, you know, playing a higher price tight end and then either picking, you know, I had a, basically a choice. Do I want Tyree Killer or do I want Cup? And if I think San Francisco, I got I'm playing their defense. So I think they're gonna they're gonna do well. You know, the Rams are only uh, projected for about three touchdowns or or 21. Uh, are 24 implied points. Yeah. So I'm hoping that Higby gets one or two. Uh, we don't go to, they don't go to cup in this, in this example. You want to hear my Mahomes lineup? Yes. Damn yes good too. Yeah. Cause uh, we were talking about switching between McKinnon and CH and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I forgot I did that. Mahomes, CH and Akers. I got Hill, Tyree Hill, Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd, a receiver, Travis Kelsey, Brandon Ayuk. And 49ers defense. That's a good one, Pretty too. Pretty good. Yep. Pretty good. Now, I only have one Ram, so that's why I put the 49ers defense. Try, try, you're trying to think of all that stuff. Every, trying to think of every little thing you can. When it, once it bites you in the ass, you're like, oh, why did I play the defense? I'm playing the damn quarterback. You know, Why would I play the defense against my own quarterback? Yep. You know, you'll, you'll think that at the end. You're like, why? You got to think of everything. You know, when you look at these winning lineups, you're like, why didn't I put that in? Exactly. They're nothing crazy. They're nothing like you They're, have to be like a, you know, really deep into the numbers. Yeah. Sometimes it's not just like trading stuff. stock where you're like, dude, how did they know that Pissant Therapeutics is going to go up 45,000% today? Like, no, it's just the same old players. Like, you should have known it. You could have got there just the same way they did. We look at them, we're like, duh. Yeah, you exactly. Know. Why? Why didn't I do that? I thought we always I thought about doing that, man. <laughs> you always got that. Or, or we have those guys. They're yeah. just not together in the yeah. same lineup. I, I changed them that morning, dude. <laughs> and it's probably true. Yeah. I do that all the time. Yeah. Those, I always make mistakes when I make last minute changes. Oh, I got to stop it. I got to stop the tinkering at the end. It always kills me. You want to hear my story oh, from last weekend? Oh, I can't wait. Okay. So I was up by $500. I, it, and I, if I can inter interject sure. here, I get, a, I get a text from Chuck saying, Man, I'm doing good this week. I'm up. He goes, and then this is right before the game's over, mm -hmm. right? And then it gets close to overtime, and, and, and then he starts to get concerned. Yes, I get concerned because I always get screwed in overtime. Always. It's, I mean, I swear to God, it's, I always say that fantasy is 70% skill, 30% luck. Well, that 30% luck for me is the gosh damn coin toss. When they, I lose the coin toss every freaking time, and I, it gets me. Now, you were in first place when you sent me that text. Yes. Of this contest. Oh, yes. Absolutely. First place. And uh, when I was up $500, almost I was up $480. And then the, I lost to the coin toss, of course. So so at the end of regulation, you were still in first place? Yes. Yes. If the game was over, then it was top you would have been paid so, out. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I was in first place. And, and keep in mind, my team didn't get touched the ball. So uh, yeah. So after that, I just watched the money dwindle away, watched my favorite team lose. I was, I was pissed to say the least. I started kicking and screaming, <laughs> just like a child. Tantrum. Tantruming. I was kicking stuff all over my garage. I kicked my fan over and I threw my heater and on. I was screaming. He has a broken yeah, toe. Oh, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I was, yeah, it was, it was pretty embarrassing. I'm glad it wasn't on video. 
And uh, my wife stuck her head out and she just politely said, get the fuck out of here. You, <laughs> everybody's terrified. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, all right, I got you. I got you. I'm leaving. Uh, I'll go blow off some steam. So I tear us out the, out down the driveway and I, I call my buddy cause he was always listening to the scanner. And I said, turn on the scanner. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but you might hear something. And I tear off down the highway fast as I can. I thought I get pulled over almost to Farmington. I was going 40 on the highway. Is that I was in a zone. Is that under the minimum? I, there's a minimum. I don't know if there's a minimum. He dude thought I was drunk as hell. I uh, probably. Probably. I showed him my lanyard, and he goes, oh, yeah, that's tough, buddy. I, I get it. So I'm like, okay, I get you off the road because I can't drive the speed limit. I can't, I can't even get to the speed limit. I'm such a badass. So I get to Walmart, and I'm like, I'm out getting a fight or something. I'm just – you get the cops called on me or something. I was the most polite person you ever met in your life in there. Just saying <laughs> hi to everybody, just as polite as you can possibly be. And uh, just picking up stuff, going down to clearance, all stuff. When I left, I was checking out, and I just had to just laugh. I had a snow tube shaped like a Siberian Husky. What is a snow tube? Like to pull behind a, oh, uh, my go-kart. Like a toboggan bought. or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, shaped like a Siberian Husky because my daughter likes Siberian Huskies. <laughs> so I had that. $25 I gave for that damn thing. And I had orange juice and chocolate milk. And I had, I and I had a, a glow-in-the-dark, five-foot-long glow-in-the-dark iPhone charger. Now, it wasn't going to snow anytime soon as far as I could see on the, on the forecast. Never does. Uh, I don't own an iPhone. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone. It wasn't breakfast. I don't know why I had orange juice and chocolate, chocolate milk. It was comfort. Per- I guess. I don't know what I bought all this stuff for. It's, it was $40 I spent on that shit. But how did it make you feel? <laughs> I laughed. So <laughs> on the way home, I was like, you're so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I just called myself dumb and I went home. I picked up all the crap that I kicked over and it, none there, of it was broke. I can't a, even kick hard. There's always <laughs> an interesting Chuck story at the end of every week. <laughs> yeah, every uh, every week in fantasy, I would have won a million dollars, but something stupid happened. <laughs>